go on a scavenger hunt. And the goal of this hunt is to try and collect as much life as we can in a very short amount of time. You have about five minutes to go on this scavenger hunt and you're going to jet off in different directions, but you're not going to go into the road and you're not going to go way far away and you're going to collect as much as you can. So now you can see that we finished our scavenger hunt and I can't wait to see what these girls found. Oh my gosh, they're really muddy already. <laughs> wow, I feel so clean now. Oh my gosh. So we had some different groups find some different things. And I think we're gonna start over here with Katrina and Tyranny and Jamie's group. And I'm guessing by the looks of you that you were the mud group. Yes, yeah. we were. <laughs> so can we start with the mud group? And Katrina, can you hold the mud up and hold it nice and still and in the sun? And what can you tell us about the mud? It's black and <laughs> <laughs> it's very inky and it smells like not something very tasty. <laughs> and it's um like watery kind of. It's really watery and it was in the creek. Oh. Okay. And so um I'm guessing yeah, it was at the bottom of the creek probably. Okay. And it was in a deep area and it was damp. How did you get it all the way down there? <laughs> um, you know, I kinda just kneeled down and scooped it up. So. Okay. <laughs> How deep was the creek? I'd say like maybe Do they have to lower you by your deep. feet? Get you on uh, no, not that deep. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I had to, you know, reach in there, and I did get muddy. So. Okay, great. But that's fun. And Jamie, what did you find over there? Um, I found some, like, it's lighter color mud, and it's more thicker. gloopy. Yeah, and thicker than the black mud. I can tilt it a little bit. And um, where did you find that it, mud? Um, under the plants near the creek. Oh, so under the plants, the mud is a lighter color, and in the creek, it's much blacker. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty typical of marshes that we have different colors of mud based on whether there's oxygen or not oxygen or what minerals are in the mud. Great. Does it look like dirt you find in San Francisco? Not really. <laughs> it smells really bad. It does. What yeah. does it smell like? Cow dung. <laughs> <laughs> nice choice of words. So let's move on to the plants group. And I told these girls this yesterday, but I, I'm a wetland scientist and I study plants. So this is the part I'm most excited about. So Kathleen and Natalie, can you tell us about the plants that you found? Well, this plant right here is one plant and you can also see them right over there. And um, I, I'm guessing this is something like cotton or something, but it's really soft and doesn't smell too good. <laughs> and I think... Wait a second. Can we go back yeah. to the one you were holding, the sort of cottony one? This one? Have um, you ever seen a plant like that before? Mm -mm. What about if you look behind you, there are some that are less cottony and they're more brown? Yeah, and she has one of those. No, these aren't those. Oh, they're a I little bit they're. different. Oh, yeah. oh, never mind. Those brown ones, I, the reason why you couldn't tell is because there are some of both of those behind you, and I described them as brown. But the one that looks like a hot dog, I think a lot of people may have seen before, the hot dog marsh plant. Does anyone know what that one's called? Mm, cattail? Exactly. Good job. Oh, yeah. Cattail. And that's what its seeds look like once they start flying off into the wind to spread around to other wetlands. Uh, I found some of these weird um, shell-like things that look like pine cones, and they're kind of prickly. They're prickly? A little bit. What does that plant feel like when you spin it around in your hand? It feels kind of like, like when it comes off, it feels really dusty. Dusty. So those are its seeds from that sedge, and you can tell it's a sedge because if you spin it this way, does it feel round or triangular? It feels triangular. Right, and sedges have edges is the old phrase, right? <laughs> sedges have edges and rushes are round. And we're, before we were sitting in the rushes and now you're, th that's a sedge. Are those the only plants you found? Um, no. We found a few more. Um, and we also found some of these um, seeds on the ground with on, not on a stem um, right here. Oh yeah. So Flying they were just on the look grass. and she's spreading them right now. This is a native cattail and it'll spread in our marsh. This little area has a little fresh water, that's why we're finding that plant here. And then over over there a little bit. 
We wow. found some of these. There's a lot of them. Oops. Okay, can you pass those around the circle? Yeah. They look like worms. Yeah. I'll yeah. Worms. Everybody take a little piece of one of the things that looks like a worm. Uh -huh. Thank it's you. It's segmented. Mm -hmm. Can I have a little piece of yours? Oh, thanks. Yeah. This plant, does anyone know what this plant is called? This plant, like they said, is segmented and it's kind of succulent, like a cactus. And if you're brave enough, I'd like you to take a little piece of yours off. Mine won't rip. And stick it in your mouth. And you can actually eat it and swallow it. <laughs> what does it taste like? It tastes like salt. Huh? Actually, it's really salt. All the plants that live in the salt marsh have oh. to find a way to deal with the salt. Because if you put salt water on your house plants, they would die, right? And so this plant deals with the salt. It survives in the salty environment by making its own cells, its own body, pretty salty so that it doesn't absorb much salt from the water. This plant is called salt grass and it actually has a way to excrete, to sort of sweat out the salt. And so if it hadn't been so foggy this morning, it might still work. You can rub your finger up the blade and then taste your finger, and it's salty even though it was so foggy. That's how this plant gets rid of its salt. So we only have a minute, my gosh, and we still have to move to the water group. So water group, oh my gosh, what did you find? The big fish, our sea monster. Our little sea monster, <laughs> yes. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it is. Um, we also found two crabs. They're pretty small. The um, fish. Can you hold the fish nice and still and to like that exactly? Whoa. What do you guys notice, Ellie? What do you notice about that fish? It's big. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bigger than you expected, huh? Mm -hmm. A lot bigger than we expected. And what color is it? Yeah. Why do you think a fish that lives in the marsh would want to be kind of brown and black like so that? So it can, blend in. yeah, exactly. it can camouflage with its surroundings, which is mud. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that fish is called a staghorn sculpin, and he actually can live in really muddy areas. So that is a pretty amazing find, and those are really cool crabs that you found too. You can actually see the crab filtering the water right now, moving its little mouth around. So, girls, we went on our scavenger hunt and you were gone for a whole six minutes, right? <laughs> yeah. And I don't see you with any big animal. I expected you to come back with like a pelican or a heron or a whale. Why didn't you get any big animals? Now? Well, because this is a national park. <laughs> and uh, really not, it. it's, you shouldn't probably really take the animals from their habitat. Yeah, but you, didn't, you saw the whale. And it'd be too big to take back. a whale here, too. So, yeah. take 500 well, people. There, <laughs> there are some well, big well, animals well. here, but we're kind of noisy, and we might have scared them away. for us to let that live animals go is in here where it's shady and watery. Oops, right down there. So, yeah, if you just lower them and let, give the camera a second so it can see you and get down as far as you can to lower them in so that they don't drop. It'd be like they're jumping off the bridge or something. Nice and slow. Goodbye. Bye, fishies. Great.